got the hopper filler lid set up on there a uh, couple little detail things we still had to do with the hopper i did off camera because they're not really a big deal you can see the bottom gutter there i built a guard that goes over top of it so you can reach it and uh so she's just got a split right there so i can bend it open and feed it past the top gutter sets in place that'll prevent any wood chunks and scrap from falling into the gutter and potentially clogging up the tar drain and because it's quick and easy removable i can pull it out scrape tar if i need to scrape the gum off of the top and get it clean now that's just a gutter guard that's really all it is it doesn't help with putting the condensation where we want it kind of does because you'll get condensation on the walls and it will drip down and in remember that gutter wall has bent down edges so there's good airflow going into the gutter which means it'll keep that tar hot especially because it's right above the fire which will keep that tar flowing to get out into the drain pipe and run down to the tank where we can get rid of that also you can see right here is another gutter guard this one sits on the top gutter and its purpose twofold you're going to keep anything from getting into the gutter but you're not really worried about that because the gutter opening is only about a half an inch below the lid. You're not really going to you know, cram wood down in there. But because it sticks all the way out, I have it sticking about a quarter of an inch inside the filler lid opening. Any condensation that picks up on that lid or on the drum lid is going to run down, hit that guard, and that guard has a little bit of a sloped bend up towards the opening. It'll run down that slope and into the gutter where it can run out the tar drain pipe and be gotten rid of. I already put the fill lid onto the hay filter. Now I did do this one a little bit different. Uh, like I said in the last video, that little welder is a very frustrating machine and welding 24 gauge sucks. So this time around, I cut the opening, slid the bucket down inside, and I pie cut all the way around the outside edge bent each one of those tabs out and pop riveted it in place and then silicone around the opening and silicone over the top of each one of the studs or uh, the rivets and then i also painted the inside wall you can just barely see the ends of the cuts right there where i bent it up you can see the rivets sticking down they're all painted up and now you can actually see the inside um, so those are our two gas lines coming in. There's our drain over there in the corner. Like I said, it's matched to the slope, so it should pick up, you know, the maximum amount of condensation to get it out of here. There are two gas outgoing lines that will be running down through the bed. I left these long for a reason. If later on down the road, the hay filter I find is uh, not filtering enough and I want to do more, I have the option of adding additional filters. This opening is also big enough if I wanted to, I could throw a piece of memory foam on the top that might have to be cleaned every three, 400 miles or so um, as an additional filter. So even though this is a small hay filter, like traditional Wayne Keith, your hay filter is as big as the hopper, uh, same height. Well, you can see mine is uh, considerably shorter, but that leaves me options open for more filtration later. So now that I got the lids on the system, we have the in-cab controls all dialed together and we have the blowers all mounted. Now it's time to do the wiring. So the way I have this set up, the two vacuum blowers sitting right underneath that frame rail are wired together on their own circuit. The reverse blower next to it, right about there that you can't see, that is on its own. And then the pusher blower is on its own. How I have that up here, here I took a piece of two and a half inch pipe and I cut it in about a two thirds circle. So it actually snaps into position on this pipe. Little piece of angle iron. So here, that would be the reverse blower. Here is the two vacuum blowers. And here is the pusher blower. And all of that is completely hidden. You can't see it whatsoever. But when you're standing up on the bed, it's right nice at hand level. Now on my other truck, I have all my switches wired in the bed. I do all the controlling from the bed. This time around, I went with uh, more of Wayne's idea. I want total in-cab control. So 
those wires, now everything's just wired right now. It's not tidied. It still needs to get all loomed up and wrapped and look nice. So obviously three wires heading back to a central ground back there for the blowers and three individual power wires to control all four blowers. And the power coming into those are up here on two switches. The third one above is the uh, fuel pump kill, so don't worry about that guy right now. Those two are powered by a 15 amp fusible link, goes inside the dash. Now, that wouldn't make much sense that I've got a single power wire running four blowers, right? Okay, keep in mind, I'm never gonna be running all four blowers at once. The reverse blower will only ever be on by itself. The vacuum blowers and the pusher blower, that's three blowers, will all be running at once. At three amps a piece, that comes up with a nine amp total. 15 amp fuse, we're 30% stronger in the fuse, so we should be good there. 14 gauge wiring all the way to the back. The switches are rated for 20 amps a piece. So we're all good to go. So the power wire comes in. I have this switch jumpered to this one. So one power wire, this red guy right here, running to both of these, powering both of them off that 15 amp. So we can turn both of these on but it does nothing because all that did was connect the power through these switches, sending it to the back of the truck. Now that these switches are turned on, each one can control its respective blowers. So when we're firing up, we're gonna have the vacuum blowers on. Then we'll put fire to it. Once she's going, we'll turn on the pusher blowers. Now we'll be venting out all the gas out from underneath the truck. If we want to back blow the hopper, we'll turn these two off, reverse blow out the top, shut it down. Now when the system's warming up, these will be on. Now the system's, let's say, ready to go. We hop in, we'll have our fuel pump, oops, fuel pump turned on, fire up, driving down the road. When we see her start to run rich, we know that we're getting wood gas up to the engine. We'll reach over here, turn the fuel pump off, Vacuum blowers off, push blowers off. Now we're dialing down the road on straight wood gas. Now, well, I guess it's time for that part I've been dreading. Hooking up all the gas lines in there. Oh, and the vacuum lines are all hooked up. Ran up through the firewall, down underneath. One to the rails over here, one to the hopper over there. Like I said, all the wiring is just sitting there right now. I need to tidy it all up. And then we're ready to start sending our gas lines down through the bed and getting them plumbed in. That'll be next episode. Thanks for watching, guys.